Hi guys, welcome to part three of the lithium ion battery pack problem and solution. So anyhow, this is going to be the capacity testing video here. Um, back on the original build series for this, part number two was the capacity testing, I do believe. Uh, anyhow, this is kind of a deja vu moment for me because when I originally did the capacity testing on this, the first time I built this pack, I actually filmed it all then scrapped that footage and then filmed it again. And I'm doing the exact same thing now. I've already filmed this once, I've scrapped that footage. Uh, and the reason why I scrapped that footage is I managed to find a 40 watt light bulb that draws 80 watts. And I wanted to pull or do the exact same test as I did before. And if I have a 40 watt light bulb and I used a 40 watt load before, I want it to be a 40 watt load Again, but somehow I managed to find a 40 watt light bulb that actually draws 80 watts of power. So that kind of messed with my test results for one thing, and even though I redid it, I decided that I'm just gonna scrap the footage anyway because I was missing a piece of footage, a very important piece of footage where I actually go over the results of the test. So uh, we're just gonna do it again. So I've got this battery pack charged up. Chances are the cells are gonna be pretty, pretty even. Not really sure that there's even a point in measuring this because uh, this just came off the charger. 4.17. If I can get the probe's contact on that, 4.18. Uh, 4.199. That's almost exactly 4.2 volts. So, anyway, uh, test setup for this will just be my usual test setup, which consists of. The battery pack, of course. This ExoVision 300 watt inverter, which is just some cheap inverter from Walmart. Bought that thing a few years back. I don't think they actually make it anymore, but it doesn't really matter. We are going to grab a watt meter, which will also measure amp hours, which is laying around here somewhere. You got this little watt meter here, which uh, isn't really the most accurate thing in the world, uh, but it will do for uh, this simple capacity measurement, especially since I used this watt meter to measure it before. So anyhow, this is just gonna plug in to the inverters cables, and then the other end of this, I'm just going to plug into these two uh, alligator clip leads. The original test, I hooked up a proper XT60 connector and soldered it onto the batteries, but uh, I'm not gonna do that here, at least not yet. So, yeah, this will go across, maybe, maybe it will. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna set this up and uh, get back to you here. All right, so basically this test setup just consists of the batteries running through this watt meter through this power inverter into a desk lamp, which I will take out the light bulb that I usually use for it, which is just a little 10 watt uh, CFL, which is really, really hot right now. This has been on for a while. And we're just gonna screw in this uh, 40 watt incandescent bulb here, which I have tested it, it actually draws 40 watts. I'll probably put the footage, I'll put the footage at the end of this video where I actually test a 40 watt light bulb and end up with 80 watts. But uh, anyhow, that, and then I'm going to grab something I can time this with. All right, so here we go, we've got a stopwatch. I think the switch on the lamp is already on, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on and start it. So there we go. Now, I think the original test with the 40 watt light bulb and this inverter gave me, I think it's like three and a half hours of runtime about 12 and a half amp hours and something like 150 watt hours, or 144 I think it was to be exact. Uh, but you can see here, currently, we are drawing about 47 watts. Uh, thing's reading, what, 12.15 volts, which the thing reads a little bit low for whatever reason, so take some of these readings with a grain of salt, but uh, anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and let that run until the inverter starts to beep, which is the exact same thing I did before, and see how much capacity we have pulled out of the battery. All right, so just real quick here, 
Um, <clears throat> this thing just got shut off. We are should come around here in a second. 11.913 amp hours, so a little bit under 12. So it looks like we have lost a bit of the capacity that it were in these cells, and this has been running for about three and a half hours. So uh, let's see, watt hour should be the next thing, 132 watt hours. So it has lost a little bit of capacity, even though we've added batteries to it. So these cells probably do have a little bit of damage to them. Uh, but I'll go ahead and charge these things back up and we'll do some more testing on them. All right, so I was gonna do some more testing on this to uh, sort of simulate the same test that I did in part two of the original build video for this series. But uh, I don't have any more 100 watt light bulbs because they've all been used up at this point. And of course, you can't buy uh, new ones anymore because it's been, well, it's illegal to make them in the US or import them. So can't really buy incandescent light bulbs anymore. So uh, I can't do the exact same test, unfortunately. I probably should do another high drain test on these just to see what they do. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure what I have that'll even pull the 300-ish watts or so. But what I'm gonna show you right now is that I've, uh, I've gone ahead and let these things sit for a little while. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the voltages are holding on the cells and we're not having any major uh, self-drainage issues like we were before. So that's at 4.12 volts. This one is at 4.13 volts, and this last set of cells that we uh, modified quite heavily is at 4.17 volts. So, there's no major issues of self-discharge there. They've been sitting for actually, I think, over a week at this point. But uh, anyhow, also, I forget if I actually showed this in the footage that I had shot previously. But when I discharge these things and measure the individual cell voltages, they are staying uh, very consistent to each other uh, since I added this battery back onto here in order to uh, balance the capacity out of this uh, pack. That is working very well. The uh, voltage stays even across these cells and they balance charge up fairly evenly. So uh, we have lost a bit of capacity out of these things, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, maybe not a whole lot. We went from what 12 and a half amp hours down to about 12 uh, Even though we've added cells onto this thing And that could be for a number of reasons one of them could be the fact that I usually like to leave these things charged up and ready to go all the time So they're always at hundred uh, percent Which is not good for lithium batteries, but I tend to do that with my laptop as well And it seems to be holding up fairly well uh the other reason, of course, because we've drained these things down to about zero volts, or really close to zero volts, which you're definitely not supposed to do to lithium batteries, that could have caused harm to them. Um, it actually probably did cause harm to them. And just the general wear and tear on these batteries could have uh, affected that as well. And we could have also had a bit of an issue where these cells were originally quite cheap. I think they're only like 10 bucks for the uh, 12 cell laptop batteries. Now granted that was on sale, but still that's cheaper than what you'd normally find them for. Um, but uh, anyhow, that could have been one of our issues, like the cells themselves are a lower quality. I don't think these actually have any kind of branding on them. That's the entire thing. You might be able to Google that and find a brand, the TH, whatever that whole model number there. You might actually be able to find some brand information on that if you look hard enough, but uh, seemingly generic cells, like these lighter blue colored ones that, pulled, that I pulled out of the uh, drill battery, you say Samsung on them. Uh, so anyway, they are staying balanced fairly well. They still have quite a bit of capacity in them, at least enough for what I'm doing. So anyway, that's uh, the capacity testing video. Also, a quick announcement, I actually have made a Twitter account for this uh, YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and follow that. Uh, if you like, the link's in the description. Um, anyhow, other than that, that's about the end of part three. I'm gonna go ahead and roll some other footage. Uh, I'll roll the footage of me discovering my 40-watt uh, light bulb that pulls 80 watts, and I actually put that light bulb in my the lighting fixture in this room, and it didn't even last a week. It eventually burned out in um, relatively short order. So, yeah, that was definitely a defective bulb. I have no idea how that... Uh, how that happened, but definitely doesn't work anymore. Uh, also, 
uh, part four of this video. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be able to get that out because it is taking forever to actually 3D print parts. I do have this much of it started. Uh, this is not finished by any stretch of the imagination. I've still got to do some sanding and smoothing this out. And of course, this is only the bottom part where this uh, where this pack fits into, which it does fit into, which is pretty nice. And also, I've got quite a bit of room here, so I'm thinking about doing some other things. I'm thinking about going and getting like a uh, a boost converter or a buck boost converter so I can have like a multi-voltage output so I can just directly charge a laptop or uh, run run anything really off of that because I should have plenty of space like in this area here. All right, so that's kind of where we're at on the lithium ion battery pack rebuilding. Uh, capacity tests still show that's pretty decent. Of course, uh, part four is going to be the building of this case. Uh, of course, I've got this part done. I've got to find. I've got to still do the models, the 3D models for the lid, and finish that up. I'm not entirely sure because it takes so long to 3D print those parts. It's just uh, I've got to find time to be able to do it. It's kind of a pain, but anyhow, hopefully I can get uh, that done fairly shortly, at least within the next week or two, and then we can get all this put back together and. Uh, finished up so uh, anyhow I'll go ahead and roll some more footage here just the stuff that I wasn't going to actually use but I kind of want to show that 80 watt light bulb thing because it uh, kind of interests me so uh, anyhow uh, stay tuned for part four and uh, hopefully I'll see you there well I have some rather interesting results here um, first off if you go back and watch part two of the uh, original build video for this thing you'll see that it ran a 40 watt incandescent light bulb for uh, about three and a half hours and I got about 12 and a half amp hours out of the battery now going back and whoops I just reset that but that was at an hour and a half but as you saw there unfortunately I just accidentally reset the thing um, <laughs> this thing only ran for an hour and a half off of the uh, the battery pack this time in a 40 watt light bulb but if you look at that, actually, it just showed it 10 point something amp hours. Um, so if we keep going around, 102 watts peak, which is pretty high, 10.3 amp hours and 112 watt hours. I forget what the watt hours was. I think it's like 144 or so. But uh, anyway, that's interesting to me because that means that we're pulling more current somehow. Uh, and actually looking at this uh, meter you see it's 102 watts peak yeah, yeah there's a glare on that but yeah it said 102 watts peak if I went the uh, the original video showed like 55 watts peak and uh, watching this it was actually like at 80 watts or so the whole time so this light bulb says 40 watts on the top of it 490 lumens and 40 watts, which I'm almost certain that that bulb at least came out of the same pack as the other one did. I might just go and plug this lamp in and use one of those uh, kilowatt meters and see see what's going on here. At the old Belkin watt meter here, we're going to kick this on and see how many watts this little lamp draws. Uh, so 77.8 watts. That is actually really weird. That is a 40 watt light bulb that's drawing 77 watts. That's kind of crazy actually. <laughs> 